and I thought maybe you'd like to look at them. Hello! If you don't know me, my name is Melissa, and I'm a watercolor artist, or at least I like to think so. I recently did a video about this crow painting called Treasure Hunter, and it was inspired by a conversation I had with a family member, which plays to the theme of differing perspectives. And by that, I mean what feels like disaster to one person might look like charmed kind of life to somebody on the outside. And since I need a bunch of tiny paintings for a miniature painting show, I decided to expand on that idea and create a bunch of tiny little paintings, all featuring crows, finding a piece of treasure in different dark or sad kind of places. Mostly places that are empty and abandoned. And I used crows not just because they're popular and I like them, but because they are a very common scavenger animal. To them, trash is treasure. This is their perspective. Anyway, so the point of this video is that I kind of, I finished them and I thought maybe you'd like to look at them. I don't know why I'm so insecure today. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start with one. This one is called Treasure in Damage. There are broken teacups that are cracked, chipped. I think they call that Kintsugi. Filling cracks with gold to highlight uh, a piece's history instead of just trying to cover it up and forget about it. And I'm doing it on these four inch wood panels because I love them so much. Now that you kind of see the idea that I'm going for, I do have a bit of footage for the process if you wanted to see how I was making these. And then I'll just continue the tour right after that. So here's a page of thumbnail sketches that I did. I've done five, the goal is eight, although I would like to do a few extra. I always start with the ones that are kind of slam dunk easy, not easy, but like the most interesting ideas to me, I guess. There's one here uh, where he's just got a bunch of scattered plastic beads on the ground that someone had dropped there accidentally and left them. I might work on this next just because that does seem very simple. <laughs> Giving yourself that, you know, slam dunk boosts my motivation to keep going. And I'm just going to draw a kind of a loose line around this. So I think for this one I'm going to uh, look up pictures of beads and <laughs> if you look up pictures of beads on Pinterest it's going to be overwhelming with lots of wonderful craft ideas that I want to do now, but I must focus. I'm going to look up pictures of like clay beads. It's just so I have more uh, shapes to play with. I'm not going to bore you with this whole drawing process, but I'm just going to kind of like draw some bead shapes and there's going to be like a crow in the background, grasses. For my like 3D element, I might actually just sew beads on this. So why am I doing scattered beads? Um, it's literally just because we went camping and in the parking lot I noticed that there was a bunch of orange plastic beads scattered everywhere. I assume that they're meant for fishing. I think they're supposed to look like fish row. <laughs> and I did spend some time picking them up. Oh, I have those actually. Glue those to this. And then it would be like very relevant to me. Unfortunately, those are orange, uh, which means that my color scheme that I choose might have to match up with orange in some way, right? Which would work if most of these things were blue or if they were all uh, warm tone. There's a couple of different ways I can use orange. The thing about color is that they all look good together. It's really hard to make colors look bad. Um, if there's an issue, it's usually just like an issue of contrast in my experience. So sometimes if you have something that looks really samey, I'll just add a really bright pop of some kind of color like bright red. And here's the thing. I don't actually really know where I'm going to go from here. I know that the crow is going to be a dark color, but knowing that I might sew orange beads to this, I might do most of these beads kind of leaning toward orange in some way. I could do rainbow colors because that's the nature of beads. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to mess around and hope for the best. <laughs> I want lots of beads. <laughs> I want it to look like there was a horrible accident. Someone dropped their bead case and now has to resort everything. That's the feeling that I kind of want for this because someone decided, oh, that's not worth cleaning up. I'm just going to walk away now. Another thing about spilled beads. My cousin and I, she used to have like this little miniature tea set and we used to use beads as the tea. <laughs> and we would end up with beads just absolutely all over the floor everywhere. My aunt would start vacuuming randomly in the middle of the day. And every time that vacuum came on, it was like a frenzy 
to pick up all of the beads because if we didn't pick up all of the beads they would get vacuumed and they would be lost forever so it was kind of like <laughs> every single day it was just this hectic race to clean up the beads faster than my aunt could vacuum the house <laughs> so this is the one that you would have just seen me doing. This is Treasure in Mistakes. It's got the beads attached to it that I found on the ground that inspired this actual whole scene. This next one is Treasure in Lost Doors, searching through a pile of antique doorknobs and lost doors could be referring to like lost opportunities whatever door might mean to you right this one is treasure and dysfunction so it's a bunch of like broken objects that don't work anymore and have been kind of just like left behind or abandoned this one's called treasure and exhaustion i'm not sure if i really like this one as much oak tree that's kind of just hanging on <laughs> its last legs. I have a bunch of watch parts kind of dangling from it. Just the cogs kind of make sense a little bit because you could say like the exhaustion is from production or work related things because everyone kind of feels like a cog in life sometimes. This one's treasure in loss so it kind of features a forest fire after the fire had come and gone so it's got the fireweed uh, come up already but everything is burnt. This one's treasure and loneliness. And for this, I have like empty uh, portrait frames. So it kind of makes think of like people who are missing. Um, there's empty bird cages and empty bird houses. This one's a fun, which <laughs> is treasure and boredom is a reference to the scene in the X-Files where Agent Mulder has become so bored and useless that he's like flinging pencils in the ceiling. I really like the color scheme of this and just like the general, like it's very easy to look at to me. It's restful. These last three are my favorite. This one is Treasure and Failure. It's in a writer's office and the keys on this typewriter are so broken, crumpled up into papers like they never actually completed anything and they just gave up. There's like dried leaves coming in through the window that never even got cleaned up because they just never returned to the space, just abandoned it. This is Treasure and Emptiness. And it's just a bunch of empty containers in a yard, probably never going to be used again. And I realized that I cannot draw cylinders if you tilt them in any kind of direction. And this one is treasure in the darkest places. I used in a previous painting that I actually borrowed from Stephanie Law or water lilies growing out of mud in order to like get through and bloom beautifully. So those are all the pieces I have right now. These three are going to be available to anybody online until I need them. So maybe until November. Because some of y'all have been here for a long time and I feel bad. <laughs> I'm going to have a link to that below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if any of those resonated with you or if you hated any of them. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!